What is up, everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning. Happy Friday, February 4th. The only thing to make today better would be if it was a payday Friday. Unfortunately, for old Rip Van Winkle over here, it is not. But next week, next week's that big payday. Nothing more than a Friday and a payday Friday, folks. Listen, last night, you know what it was. Kickball, softball. Kickball team lost. 4-1. to one. Not good. Softball team won, though. So, hey, 2-0 in softball, 0-1 in kickball. It's early. I didn't play, not yet, but I'm telling you, I listen, mark my words. My legs are feeling good. I'm getting stronger. I'm going to be out there soon. I can't wait. Now, listen, we have a lot to go over. We got to talk about this Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. Major, major, I don't want to call them rulings, major documents have come out. We got a couple of email strands that were released to the public from Brad Gallinghouse and Chris Lawson. I don't know if you read them yet. We're going to review. We're going to talk about Africa. We're going to talk about this Quarium airdrop. Let's stop wasting time, folks. Without further ado, let's head over to Live Coin Watch. What are we seeing? I'll tell you what we're seeing. We're seeing a little bit of green this morning, and I like green. Bitcoin, $37,861. That is currently up 3.18% in the past 24 hours. Our beloved XRP still chilling at the number eight spot. And once again, seems like it's pretty stable to me. Wink, wink, huh? World Bank stable. Yeah, see what I'm doing here? 61 cents. It's up 2.26% in the past 24 hours. Total market cap, just a tad bit shy, 1.8 trillion. Coming in at 1.78 trillion in the Bitcoin dominance. Once again, it's in the range. It is sitting at 40.12%. We've been floating in this range has to be since December now, folks. Listen, sooner or later, something's going to give. You know, the Bitcoin's going to absolutely dominate this market and drag everything else up with it. Or Bitcoin's going to tank the bed and everything's going to break away from Bitcoin. Those key numbers to look for in a Bitcoin dominance is 35 and 45%. We are still just floating and chilling. Now, Corium, everyone. If you don't remember, Sologenic is going to do an airdrop. Their airdrop, for, for those of you who hold the Solo token, you will be getting the token core. You will be getting an airdrop for the next 11 months. Core put out. Here's a step-by-step -step guide for solo holders, of solo holders how to create the trust line. Listen, here's the Medium article. I'm going to break it down how easy it is for you, right? Go over to xrpl.services. You're going to sign in with some. You know, take your phone, scan the QR code. Boom, you're connected. You're going to come down here where it says trust, set trust lines. You're going to click it. It's going to ask you for the XRPL address. We're just going to come back to the article. We're going to scroll down towards the bottom. And it tells us right here. You got the gateway issuer. Boom. Currency check code. Boom. Send it on over. Your sum will be connected. That's easy. They also have a way to connect the trust line to your XRPL toolkit for those of you who hold your crypto on the Ledger Nano. That is the way I will be going. Well, I'll be doing some too. I got a little sprinkled around both for these airdrops. But hey, another airdrop, I'm down. Because I mean, let's, let's review the airdrops we have. Let's talk about that for a second. Solo, now Core. We have Songbird, we have X5, we're earning S Fin, and we're still waiting for Flare. I'm counting six. Did I miss a major one? I don't think so. I'm excited for these folks. Listen, yeah, I know Songbird isn't worth as much as it once was worth. I get it. But Songbird's going to be around for a while. You're making Songbird each and every week by delegating and staking it. Hey, the price is going to go back up. Listen, the price the, the price of all these cryptos in the market are going to go back up. We're in a little bit of a downtrend right now. A little slump, some might call it. Snap out of it because that's what the market's going to do. You don't want to be caught left behind. This is the time, and it's not financial advice. Don't even come at me in the comments. You know who you are. This is the time where people make their money, okay? These are the times you buy things because everything is on sale. You buy them for cheap, so when we do explode, you are making a nice return. You don't stop buying them when they go up. If you've done your research and you have full faith in the project that you were going after, like XRP, 
you stack up here, folks. Think about it. XRP is still, what, a 6X away from its all-time high? Do you really firmly believe deep down inside of you that XRP, worst-case scenario, is never going to break its all-time high? Of course not. So a 6X, where else are you getting a 6X, folks? It's absolutely amazing returns, but we all know what's going higher than that. Then my man Michael about Five Links puts this out. Africa's largest cryptocurrency exchange is looking to expand its foothold in the U.S., Owned by conglomerate digital currency group, Luno is assessing regulatory regimes in all 50 states to allow for its rollout in the course of the year. Here's the article. It says Luno has 9 million users from Asia to Africa. What I find interesting here is SoftBank led a little, not evaluation, but they did a funding to help them. And you know Luno? Well, yeah, it's weird because look right here. They do offer Ripple, a.k.a. they offer XRP, folks. So they offer Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP, the big three. Weird, huh? Coming to the U.S. Well, I'm sure those of you remember this. Let me just play this clip. This is about the deal, the deal of the century from Val Hill Capital. Well, the paperwork is out. Here we go. Let's get, let's segue into what we're about to talk about. $5,000 a coin easy to project that it that it's a double digit number so you know i think it immediately shoots up to a ten dollar potentially twenty dollars uh the wild card to me the deal to be done among the central banks have xrp work as the the world's bridge currency a neutral a neutral asset that could be traded between the central banks to move a specific type of fiat to another type of fiat if if that's what occurs uh, it's back to what we were discussing earlier. It's got to cover kind of all the money. And I think you're looking at a range that XRP would settle on agreement. So this would happen instantaneously, somewhere between $10,000 and $35,000, $5,000. Everyone likes those numbers, the agreements. What's he talking about? Here we go. Jimmy Vallel, the proposed terms have been released. Here they are. I'm not going to go through them. They were sent to the Fed and the U.S. Treasury on October 29th. They are now officially out. Looks like it's about eight pages or so. If you want to read them, head over to J Valley, V-A-L-L-E-E -E, 2000. Give them all a read, folks. But you know what? Old Rip Van Wink ain't got time this morning to read them to you. Then let's talk about this lawsuit. James K. Filer puts this out. In today's ruling, Judge Torres ordered three documents unsealed now. 172-1, the notice of Brad Gollinghouse deposition in the SEC formal investigation. 179-4, a Chris Larson email string. And then 179-5, a Brad Gollinghouse email. So the first one is right here. I got the other two pulled up. We're going to briefly go over these. I'm not going to read them word for word. I don't want to get you all wild up and crazy and put you to sleep. You might be driving to work. But the first one says, pretty much as we scroll through this, well, Brad Gollinghouse needs to be questioned. That's all it comes down to. It says, your client Brad Gollinghouse connection with the above restaurant. The subpoena requires your client for testimony on April 2nd, 2020. So we knew he was good. He got called in for testimony two years ago to talk. Nothing, nothing really crazy there. Got released. Big deal. But the other two I find quite interesting. This is Exhibit G filed on the seal. This was just released. So this was Brad Gollinghouse's email to the team after Brad went to consensus back in 2017. What he says here, and I'll sum it up. Let me sign the paragraph. Bum, bum, bum. All right, he states, our primary goal of consensus was to advance deals with digital asset exchanges and payment providers that build XRP liquidity and payment volume. Mission accomplished. Love to hear it. Both leading into the event and coming out of the event, we continue to have great momentum and adding exchanges and payment service providers as Ripple partners. I came away from the show not only feeling good about our deal, our deal progress, but also our market position. Our leadership and maturity and shipping enterprise ready products, signing commercial contracts with customers and grounding XRP in a real use case made us stand out head and shoulders above anyone else in the world of blockchain. 
We entered the show with the wind at our backs, having lined up a series of good news for XRP that make our conversations at consensus as productive as possible. We proactively address two key objections to XRP, publishing our plans to further decentralize the XRP ledger and announce our commitment to lock up the lion shares of XRP, which we know as their escrow. So to me, what does this sound like to you? This sounds like a team. A team who is building and who went to this consensus meeting, interview, platform, panel, whatever you want to call it, who was very, very excited about what they have in line for their company and moving forward to advance this space. Now, I think my man, Lord Light Now, who sent me a DM, said it best. He said Ripple is being sued for acting responsibly, for being sued for because they're excited about market growth and company growth. There's nothing damning here, folks. This is a, a CEO who is excited about the work that him and his team has done. Are you kidding me? Then we get over to this. Another file. This is a Chris Lawson's email. I'm not going to read this to you. This is a freaking joke. Someone named Art. Art for trade at Gmail. I don't know who he is. Sounds like these emails could all could be like a setup email. Pretty much, he was like, "Hey, Chris, I see a bunch of XRPs being moved. I did some digging on Bitthump, and it looks like it's your guys' wallet. Can you explain? Legit, what this email is? Who cares? Listen, Chris Lawson and Brad Garlinghouse, Joe Katz, they own XRP. If they want to sell the XRP that they own, they should be allowed to. They own the asset." They own it. It's going to be in their best interest not to sell it, not to destroy, obviously, the market. But why? why there's nothing here. There is absolutely nothing here, folks. Then we move over to this. Crypto Law puts this out. Ordered by Judge Torres, granting in part and denying in part motions by defendants Brad Gollinghouse, Chris Lawson to seal some exhibits to previous motions. Torres will unseal an email to Lawson and legal memos to Ripple, finding arguments to seal unjustified but granted redactions to Gollinghouse to protect, and I quote, the sensitive information in three documents. And Johnny Deaton, what does he say? Judge Torres, our rulings are a great sign for XRP holders. What these rulings clearly show is that Judge Torres favors public disclosure. Ripple can't seal certain documents. Same applies to the SEC. Bada beam, bada boom, folks. Listen. Ripple did everything right. This suit needs to come to an end. This is the biggest joke. This is the biggest joke in our lifetimes. The SEC is going after Ripple because they were an excited company with doing everything the right way, and yet they got attacked. It doesn't make any sense. Listen, that's where I'm going to leave it. I'll be back this afternoon on my lunch break. So you, wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.